Merry Christmas. Merry Welcome Christmas. to the Lord's house on this day. We'll continue then with our hymn of invocation number 367. Angels from the realms of glory wing your flight the earth ye who sing creation story now proclaim Messiah's birth come and worship come and worship worship Christ the newborn King Watching o'er your flocks by night, God with us is now residing. Yonder shines the infant light. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Sages, leave your contemplations, brighter visions beam afar. Seek the great desire of nations, ye have seen his natal star. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. For the altar bending, watching long in hope and fear, suddenly the Lord descending in his temple shall appear. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. All creation joy in praising God the Father, Spirit, Son. Evermore your voice is raising to the eternal three in one. We continue with Confession and Absolution on page 184. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our entrance hymn is the first three stanzas of number 372.
O Jesus Christ, thy manger is my paradise at which my soul reclineth. For there, O Lord, doth lie the Word, made flesh for us here in thy grace, forth shineth. He whom the sea and wind obey doth come to thee to the sinner in great meekness. Thou God's own Son with us art one dost join us and our children in our weakness. Thy light and grace, our guilt efface, thy heavenly riches all our loss retrieving. Manuel, Thy birth doth quell the power of hell and Satan's bold deceiving. You can see with Kyrie on page 186. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, good will toward men. We praise Thee, we bless Thee, we worship Thee. We glorify Thee, we give thanks to Thee for Thy great glory. O Lord God, Heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, See upon us, thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, Grant that the birth of your only begotten Son in the flesh may set us free from the bondage of sin. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Maybe may be seated for the Old Testament. The Old Testament reading for the Nativity of our Lord is from Isaiah chapter 52. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who publishes peace, who brings good news of happiness, who publishes salvation, who says, To Zion, your God reigns. The voice of your watchmen, they lift up their voice. Together they sing for joy, for eye to eye they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you waste places of Jerusalem. 
For the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations. And all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today is the second psalm. It can be found in the very beginning of the hymnal. We'll speak responsibly by half verse. <clears throat> Why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us burst their bonds apart and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord holds them in derision. Then he will speak to them in his wrath and terrify them in his fury, saying, As for me, I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill. I will tell of the decree. The Lord said to me, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will make the nations your heritage, and the ends of the earth your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron, and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Now therefore, O kings, be wise. Be warned, O rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry. And you perish in the way, for his wrath is quickly kindled. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The epistle is from Hebrews chapter 1. Long ago, and many times, and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. He is the radiance of the glory of God, and the exact imprint of his nature. And he upholds the universe by the word of his power. After making purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, today I have begotten you. Or again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, Let all God's angels worship him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the hallelujah. Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things are made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory. Glory as of the only Son, from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. We speak the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things, visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, 
begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things are made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated for the hymn of the day, the final stanzas of number 372. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Now today we are taking up the theme that the mysteries of the faith, in fact, are the foundation of our faith. Uh, Christianity is a religion of mysteries, and this is a good thing. Uh, there are those who would say that a religion of mysteries is an irrational religion. I do not believe this is the case. I do not believe that Christianity is irrational. But however, that there are truths that we preach and teach in Christianity which transcend our rational minds. You see, if... A God is a God that we can comprehend. A God that can be contained in our own minds. And that is a God not worth believing in. That is a God that can be contained within ourselves. That would be a weak and powerless God. There are some who mock Christianity and our beliefs and say what you believe. How can the mind understand that? And if the mind cannot understand it, why would you believe it? But in fact, if we could totally understand, if we could totally comprehend, then wouldn't it be anything worth believing? 
let's not make any mistakes about this. The truths that we confess this Christmas morning are truths that utterly transcend understanding. Think about what we preach and teach this Christmas morning. We preach and teach that God became man. Think about this. God, who is all-powerful, became a weak, defenseless baby. God, who knows all things, had to learn how to walk, had to learn how to talk. God, who we confess, gives all things. The ones who is the source of our life himself was born. God, the one who sustains this life by giving us our daily bread, himself had to be nursed at the breasts of Mary. God, who is omnipresent because being infinite, the entire idea of being located in a place is utterly nonsense when it comes to God. God took up residence here on earth in the package of a little baby. God, who is immortal, in fact, mortality has no bearing upon him whatsoever because he is eternal. God enters into time and he enters into our mortal frame. He has a birth and eventually he will also have a death. A death prefigured, in fact, by the manger. For as he was laid in the rough wood of the manger, this was just simply to foretell the fact that he would be laid upon the rough wood of the cross. Can the mind comprehend such things? Absolutely not. These things absolutely defy comprehension. We can apprehend them. We cannot comprehend them. Thanks be to God for this. Because this shows us that he is a God worth believing in. He truly is a God who is great. Uh, many of no, you know, I've mentioned this in sermons, that uh, throughout my life um, I have visited the religious facilities of, of other religions not to worship, not to pray. We only worship the one true God. We only pray to the one true God. But in order to observe, and in fact, at times, to witness. Uh, every single time I have gone into a Muslim mosque, the uh, president of the congregation, more or less, the Glenn Smith, will take me aside and say, you know, we Muslims, we love Jesus. We believe he's the greatest prophet aside from Muhammad. But how can you believe that God could be man and man could be God? How can you believe that a man can be the son of God? This makes no sense. And I tell them, every single time, this is my opportunity to witness. Your confession is that God is great, right? And then he says, yes, God is great. What greater thing could there be than that God could become man? Because this is an act so great that, yes, it transcends what you can understand. But that's how great we Christians confess God to be. That His greatness, His glory was shown forth in the little weak, humble babe of Bethlehem. And this God of mysteries, he is a God who continued to work mysteries through the work of Jesus Christ. Through his death, 
we have life. Through his rejection, we have acceptance. Through his work on the cross, sinners become righteous people. Those who have rejected God have become sons of God. We who are of limited life, we instead have the hope of eternity. These are the truths that we confess as Christians. And these blessings laid out for us in Christ Jesus utterly defy the mind. Yes, indeed. The God of mysteries is the only God worth worshiping. And because he is a God of mysteries, he has laid up for us such treasures and eternal life that no mortal mind can comprehend them. So yes, indeed, let us gladly confess these mysteries of the faith. That God and Christ became man and man God. For the God of mysteries is the only God worth worshiping. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue with the offertory. Holy Incarnation, that in Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, became one of us, that we might become your sons. Make us this Christmas day glad for all the mysteries of the faith and confident for the mysterious blessings laid up for us in eternity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. King of kings and Lord of lords, you are the source of every blessing, including the blessing of good government, and so therefore we lift up to you our president and governor, our courts and our legislatures, that through their work we may be enabled to lead lives of peace and quietness to your glory. We also especially lift up to you this day all those who put themselves in harm's way for us, our soldiers, sailors, Airmen and Marines, our police officers, firefighters, paramedics, and EMTs. Keep them safe even as they keep us safe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, before a word is on our tongue, you know it all together. For you are closer to our hearts than we are to them ourselves. Therefore, we lift up all of the desires of our hearts, remembering especially this day the homeless the hospitalized, the imprisoned, and the hungry, that you would fill up in them whatever is needful, O Lord. Bless as well all of those who put themselves, uh, all, bless as well all of those uh, within our household of faith who need your special care, remembering especially your servants, Jim Engelking, Bob Nugel, and Donald Walters. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things, whatever else you know that we need, Grant us, the Lord, through your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. And 
Lift up your hearts, we lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have given us a new revelation of your glory, that seeing you in the person of your Son, we may know and love those things which are not seen. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, Holy Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Blessed is he, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night on which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this to in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. O Christ, thou Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Christ, thou... Welcome to the table of the Lord. The true body of Christ given for you. The true body of Christ given for you. True blood of Christ shed for you. True blood of Christ shed for you. The true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you. The body and soul to life everlasting, depart in peace. Amen. Welcome to the table of the Lord. The true blood of Christ shed for you. The true blood of Christ shed for you. 
true blood of Christ shed for you. True blood of Christ shed for you. The true blood of Christ shed for you. The true blood of Christ shed for you. The true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul, the life everlasting, depart in peace. Welcome to the table of the Lord. The true blood of Christ shed for you. May God the Father bless you and keep you in baptismal faith and life everlasting. The true blood of Christ shed for you. True blood of Christ shed for you. True body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul, the life everlasting, depart in peace. Welcome to the table of the Lord. The true blood of Christ shed for you. True blood of Christ shed for you. True blood of Christ shed for you. True body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting depart in peace. Welcome to the table of the Lord. True blood of Christ shed for you. True blood of Christ shed for you. True blood of Christ shed for you. True body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting depart in peace.
These rise to Nuktamidis on page 199. Now let us, thou thy servant, depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people. A light to light in the Gentiles, and the glory of thy people, Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the salutary gift, and we implore that of your mercy you would strengthen us to the same in faith toward you, and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless me, the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. 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 Our sending him is number 388. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is Lord. While shepherds kept their watching or silent flocks by night, Behold, throughout the heavens there shall <coughs> mountain over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is Lord. Feared and trembled when low above the earth rang out the angel chorus that hailed our Savior's birth. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Tell it on the mountain. Thus Christ is born. In a lonely manger, the humble Christ was born, and God sent us salvation that blessed Christmas morn. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. 